Today, we only have three places on the itinerary, the Botanical Garden, Olympic Stadium, which are both located north of downtown Montreal, and John Drapeau Park, which hosted the 1964 World's Fair. To get to the Botanical Garden or Olympic Stadium, take the Green Metro Line towards Honoré Beaugrand, get off at Station IX. If you are coming from a station that is not part of the Green Metro Line, change at Barry UQAM. The Botanical Garden is located across the street from the Olympic Park and is a short walk from Pi IX Station. The Montreal Botanical Garden is a large botanical garden in Montreal, compromising 75 hectare acres of thematic gardens and greenhouses. It was designated as the National Historic Site of Canada in 2008 as it is considered to be one of the most important botanical gardens in the world due to the extent of its collections and facilities. The garden was founded in 1931 in the height of the Great Depression by Mayor Chameleon Hood after years of campaigning by Brother Marie Victorian. The grounds were designed by Henry Toucher while the Art Deco Administrative Building was designed by architect Lucien F. Carrack. The Montreal Botanical Garden is one of the four nature-focused attractions belonging to the City of Montreal in the Space for Life Museum District. The others are the Biodome, the Insectarium, and the Planetarium, all of which are near the Olympic Stadium. Recent visitors called this garden a must visit with a lot to see.
Admission to the botanical garden costs $22.75 per adult, and this does not include admission to the Insectrium, which is one of the largest insect museums in North America, with more than 250,000 species of living and naturalized insects. The botanical garden and Insectrium are open every day at 9 a.m. and stay open until 6 or 7 p.m., depending on the time of year. Amazon Prime allows you to enjoy same day, one day, and two day deliveries on millions of items, have exclusive Prime member discounts, and free shipping on orders of $150 on at Amazon Fresh stores. If you sign up for a Prime membership using the link in the description, Amazon will give you a free 30 day trial. Try Audible Plus today, where you can stream and download thousands of shows and titles from the Plus catalog, including Audible Originals, audiobooks, and podcasts. Audible is perfect for when you're in long commutes, like when I was traveling from New Jersey to New York City, or from Manhattan to Flushing. Use the link in the description to get your free trial. TripAdvisor is the world's largest travel guidance platform, helping hundreds of millions of people each month become better travelers from planning to booking to taking a trip. Travelers across the globe use the TripAdvisor site and app to discover where to stay, what to do, and where to eat based on guidance from those who have been there. With more than 394 million reviews and opinions of nearly 8 million businesses, travelers turn to TripAdvisor to find deals on accommodations, experiences, reservations on tables at delicious restaurants, and discover great places nearby. As a travel guidance company available in 43 markets and 22 languages, TripAdvisor makes planning easy no matter the trip. The Montreal Botanical Garden and Olympic Park are both places you should visit while in Montreal. The Chinese gardens were constructed along the traditional lines for a main dynasty Chinese garden. Covering 2.5 hectoacres. acres, it has many winding paths, an artificial mountain, and a building in the Chinese style housing, a collection of bonsai and penjing that have been donated. The garden is populated with Chinese plants. The garden was constructed in 1990 to 91 by 50 artisans from the Shanghai Institute of Landscape Design and Architecture. Directed by Li Wei Zhong, the project required 120 containers of material imported from Shanghai, including 500 tons of stone from Lake Tai in the Jiangsu province. Rustic and, rustic and asymmetrical at first glance, the Montreal Chinese Garden was created according to rigorous aesthetic principles. It is both a place of contrast and harmony. The spatial organization and pavilion's architecture, the sections of plants and minerals, and the contrast of yin and yang are all expressions of the secular principles of Chinese art of landscape design. Chinese gardens play with havoc with perspectives and western conventions. Their components are laden with great metaphoric meaning. A designer reproduces nature not by intimidating it, but rather by interpreting it. By creating a 3D portrait, shapes and masses are used to achieve contrast and arouse emotion. The Japanese gardens were created in 1988 under the direction of designer Ken Nakajima. Its 2.5 hectare acres are populated with Japanese plants and it contains a building in the Japanese style containing an exhibit on tea. The Japanese tea ceremony is performed there during the summer and anyone can take classes to learn more about it. Such as Laudo and Aikabana are occasionally demonstrated there as well. It also includes a large Kaio pond where visitors often feed the Kaio. The garden hosts the annual Hiroshima Memorial Ceremony on the 5th of August with its hourly ringing of the Japanese peace bell made in Hiroshima. 
A stroll in the Japanese garden awakens all the senses. By turns, one can admire the beauty of the layout of stones, of meticulously shaped shrubs and trees in tune with the seasons, and of flowerings in tune with the seasons. Water is omnipresent in the garden and sometimes rushing down cascades to end its course in the pond. Since its inauguration in 1988, the Japanese garden has been a source of pride for the botanical garden. Year-round visitors to the greenhouses can admire permanent and various thematic exhibitions showcasing the botanical gardens plants collection, showcasing the botanical gardens plants collections. In winter, the greenhouses beckon with their warmth and beauty. In the summer, the lush tropical vegetation and the exotic penjing, a unique collection of lovingly landscaped fashion in containers by horticulturalists are always popular. Each specially themed greenhouse offers a window on the many ways that plants adapt to their environment. The Exhibition Greenhouse, first opened in 1958, cover an area of 4,000 meters square. The 36,000 plants they contain represent some 12,000 species, varieties, and cultivars. Access to the Exhibition Greenhouses is through the Reception Center, located behind the administrative building. Thanks to 10 large greenhouses, each tailored to a specific theme, the 190-acre botanical garden is home to more than 22,000 species of flora and offers scenic year-round respite from Montreal's downtown core. Way Away provides travelers with the best rates on airplane tickets, and with the Way Away Plus membership plan, you can get cash back on flights, accommodation, car rentals, tours, and more. Use my links in the description below to get a Plus membership and get the Android app. Airlo is the world's first eSIM store that solves the pain of high roaming bills by giving travelers access to eSIMs. More than 1 million people are already using Airlo's eSIM. With the eSIM from Airlo, travelers can download and install a digital data pack for over 200 countries or regions and get connected anywhere in the world as soon as they land. Use the link in the description below to get your Airlo eSIM today and get the mobile app. The primary venue of the 1976 Summer Olympics, Montreal's Olympic Stadium is a massive, monumental, multi-sport complex. It serves as the largest covered amphitheater and sports venue in Quebec and is also the largest stadium in Canada. It has a permanent seating capacity of 56,000. The stadium was integrated into the Montreal Tower, the Olympic Pool, and the former Velodome, which is today known as Biodome. 
The stadium is often referred to as the Big O by Montrealers. The Olympic Stadium sits at the center of the Olympic Park complex. The complex itself is located in the middle of a sprawling collection of sports facilities, attractions, venues, and museums in Montreal's East End. The stadium was designed by renowned French architect Roger Telebert, supposedly Montreal Mayor's Jean Drapeau's favorite architect. Drapeau had been interested in a sports stadium for nearly a decade before Montreal was awarded the Olympics. When Montreal obtained a professional baseball franchise in 1969, and Trapeau promised the owner of the Montreal Expos a covered stadium within two years. Not long after, Talibert's firm apparently began working on the stadium before the Olympics became official. Drapeau's decision to employ a French architect was not popular among Quebec's professional order of architects. They wanted the Olympics to showcase local talent. The stadium's design was unique among traditional Olympic stadiums. The stadium had a cantilevered tower that suspends retractable roof. The stadium's main structure is supported by 34 concrete consoles. This means that the stadium essentially does not rest on the ground. The roof is now permanently closed. Originally, the plan was to have a stadium whose roof could be fully open in the summer and could be closed in the winter, allowing for year-round use. Drapeau also wanted to build a monumental tower for Montreal since the mid-1950s, and this stadium project allowed him to accomplish this goal. A visit to Olympic Stadium not only allows you to remember the important events, but discover that this witness to history of the city still vibrates with true validity. Its architectural, historical, and patrimonial value is undeniable. Guys are very happy to accompany visitors inside this bold and complex architectural masterpiece and to share both technical details of its construction and antidotes gleaned over the years and events. Tours run multiple days a day from Thursday to Sundays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. During the summer months, it goes until 5.30 p.m. Tours cost $15, the observation costs $24.25, the combination costs $33.50. Cotopaxi is guaranteed for good, built to last, sustainably sourced, and ethically made. The company stands behind their products, which is one of the reasons why they have received more than 2,000 plus 5-star reviews. Their products are durable by design, but if there's a problem, they'll make things right. Cotopaxi is well known for their Alpa Travel Pack. They have a 28-liter, 35-liter, and 42-liter travel pack, along with duffel bags, which come in 50-liter and 70-liter sizes. If you need a travel backpack, I'll leave a link to them in the description below so you can get started on your backpacking journey. To get from John Drapo Park from the Olympic Stadium, take the metro from Pi IX to on Grignan, change at Barry UQAM to Yellow Line to Longuel University de Sherbrooke. Make sure you get off at John Drapo stop because Longuel University de Sherbrooke is in Zone B. John Drapeau Park offers a multitude of facilities and recreational opportunities just minutes away from downtown Montreal. Spanning two islands in the middle of the St. Lawrence River, this outstanding park is named in honor of the man who was mayor of Montreal for 30 years until 1986. It played host to the events that shaped the history of Montreal and Canada, such as Expo 67, and the 1976 Summer Olympics and continues to welcome international happenings from festivals to concerts to sporting events all year long. An open-air amphitheater that can host 65,000 people has been set up on Isle St. Helena complete with a concourse connecting the metro station with main points of interest including Alexander Calder's sculpture Le Helme and the Biosphere. 
This green aeosis is a haven for sports, recreation, nature, and culture. With a 25 kilometer network of multidisciplinary trails that wind through a picturesque landscape dotted with valuable public artwork and vistas of Montreal's cityscape. In addition, there is a public beach, three outdoor pools, La Ronde amusement park, two museums, plus a diverse program of fun-filled activities, events, and exhibitions for people of all ages. You really can spend a whole day here. The Montreal Botanical Garden, Olympic Stadium, and John Draper Park are all worthy of visiting and offers visitors something different than what you see in all of Montreal and offers you something that you can't see anywhere else in Montreal. Plus, there are places where you can spend half a day at. In my next episode of the Montreal Travel Series, I'll be visiting downtown Montreal, which is going to be a two-parter.